We're back, we're back. I'm Dave Donaldson, welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we take a look at Aperture's 300D Mark II. Uh, they contacted me not too long ago and they said, hey, can we send you this light and some accessories and have you review it? And I was absolutely like, hell yeah. I've wanted to check out this light since it was announced at NAB. Uh, so I was like, send me that beautiful piece of litration. So I cracked it open and already I noticed an improvement right out of the gate with their uh, new case. First of all, there's an obvious window so that you can slide in a business card or some sort of ID where I'm using my union card here as an example. I struggled to even put this inside of the window, uh, but honestly that just kind of tells me that whatever I put inside of there is staying there. In fact, I had to use my Leatherman to get my card back. You also get a shoulder strap that easily carabiners onto the case for easy carrying and freeing up your hands. Uh, and the case in itself feels a little bit more durable. And my favorite part about the case upgrade is that the lid completely opens wide. I remember this being a tad annoying uh, with the Mark I's case, but in this case, that's not the case. So case closed, case reopened. They also added these adjustable straps so that you can adjust the lid to your liking, which tighten and loosen easily. And the mesh pocket is still there, but is no longer divided. It's just one big giant pocket, which you can carry whatever you need. And per usual, Aperture sent me some stickers, a manual, and a wireless remote. Now the first thing that I wanted to get my hands on were the cables. The cables in the Mark I were extremely sketchy from an electrics point of view. They came coiled up the same way that IEC cables come with your computer when you buy one. Uh, and if there's anything that a gaffer or a best boy hates the most, it's how the cables are wrapped or just cable management. This is kind of a tough call because these are XLRs, which all sound guys will argue that that's kind of an over under wrap. Uh, but every electric will also tell you that any type of power cable is always over over. So I don't really know where that falls on the spectrum. Maybe a few of you pros out there want to weigh in. Um, but personally, what I'm going to do with these for uh, now is that I'm going to wrap my XLRs over over and a little bit wider uh, than a tight coil because a tight coil will actually bend the memory of the cable in itself. So when you actually go to lay that cable down, it's actually not going to lay flat the way that you would prefer. So, however, another thing that I wanted to really check out was exactly what type of gauge these cables were along with the jacketing on it. Uh, and you can all rest assured that they're using 16.3 SJOW cord. Um, I would prefer if they were 12.3, much like my Stingers, but for the type of power that it's gonna need, this will work absolutely fine. Speaking of power, this light actually runs off of 350 watts, which in terms of paper amps means 3.5 amps. Uh, that's also a really great feature as far as this light goes because that means that we can take about four of these and run them off of a 15 amp breaker or just kind of an older household circuit breaker or fuse unit. Uh, or if we have like a newer house, we can have five of these running on just one breaker. I mean, can you imagine five of these lights? That's just like the power of the sun inside of a household. Let's also not forget that you can run this on batteries just like the Mark I. This one has V mounts, but you can also get the AB gold mounts if you prefer those. And it's recommended that you use a 15 amp continuous draw battery, uh, but nothing less than 14 at a minimum. You can actually run with one battery at half power using the red V mount side of the ballast only, or you can run at full power with two batteries on both mounts. The ballast is no longer a two ballast system, but has a couple of ways to mount on a stand. You can simply hang it up by the paracord style leash, or it comes with these little feet on the bottom of the ballast so that you can set it on a flat surface, but still have it raised off of the ground. And lastly, they have this mount that's kind of like a Mayfer Vice quick release plate system. And it kind of reminds me of some of the camera plates that I've used, but it can mount right side up, or you can take it off and mount it upside down. So they also added an S Bones mount reflector, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, let's talk about the lamp head in itself. I really dig the design that they have with this light. Uh, it also looks like it can be placed on a baby or a combo stand given the inside and outside diameters of the yoke mounts receiver. They also changed the diffuse protector so that there's no hole in the middle of it like the Mark I had, which is greater protection for the light in itself. Also, the locking mechanism for the S Bowens release, I feel, is designed to be a little bit more tougher. It feels like things are a little bit stronger in that area. Uh, I put the 2 by Fresnel accessory on it, and I had a problem trying to get it off. It, it was just a little bit difficult. I can never find out if I'm actually, if I've got the release back enough or forward enough to kind of just let go of the accessory that I have in it. Not that it wasn't loose enough in there, but maybe this is just something that, I don't know if the mechanics need to be worked in a little bit more because it is a brand new light. It would be kind of cool, and this is just my note to Aperture, it would be cool if you had some sort of kind of quick release system for the S Bones mount where it's kind of like I can press it in and it locks immediately, just like the ballast does. I, I, I could be a little bit picky, but it's just something that I kind of noticed. 
The Oak Brake for the Light is a new design that they got from their 120D series, and I think it feels a little bit more solid uh, just having a knob that doesn't need to be in any one spot because it's a ratcheting lever and it's also made of metal. So no getting stuck in one position. And furthermore, on that note, something that I wish that all lights had is complete 360 degrees of rotation. There's no stopping going back or forward. You can spin this light all the way around inside of the yoke's hand. So that was a really, really cool upgrade. So overall, just build quality and design. I'm really, really impressed by this light. Like it honestly, it, it just like, as soon as I opened it, I was like, yes. Uh, now let's head up the light and go a little deeper. After plugging in all the cables and flipping the switch on, I checked the ballast and as they advertise, the brightness knob now dials from zero all the way to 100%. You can also head into their menu system to customize the light to work the way that you want it to, whether that be fine tuning this on a DMX system. You can also control the lights and how they dim, whether that's exponential, S-curve, the default linear or logarithmic. Fan mode for switching the fan on and off between force and auto. Studio mode for more DMX control or what have you. Bluetooth reset option for pairing with your phone as this light can be controlled wirelessly that way. And then a mode to upload firmware as it becomes available because there's also a USB port on the side of the ballast. Now if we back out into the main interface and we hold the lighting slash effects button for a second, we are brought into our effects menu, starting with strobe, which as it sounds is a strobe light, explosion, which is an immediate on and slow to dim kind of feel, paparazzi to imitate camera flashes, fireworks to give you all the feels of Disney, fault bulb for all you horror slash suspense peeps, and then on top of that, we can change the intensity of these effects for exposure. And frequency, which in my opinion should just be called rhythm, and I kind of wish that there was like maybe like a manual or like a heads up display on the display to kind of let you know like when an effect was gonna happen uh, because otherwise I don't really know when that's going to take place. Like paparazzi, you don't I guess you don't really need to know that, but for like explosion, you kind of want to know when that's going to come up and just and, and just hit because otherwise I kind of feel like this is just doing it randomly regardless what frequency you're on. So it's just some sort of way to kind of figure out when to predict one thing or another. Also on the interface, and just like the Mark I, you still have the ability to control these with the provider remote on separate channels. So aside from DMX, you still have that option as well. Now on to the actual S. Bowens reflector that it came with. Um, I have to agree with my buddy Caleb Pike on his channel. He was reviewing this light as well. There's a definite hot spot in the middle, and that's because, uh, well, the beamer, the reflector, is kind of pushing the beam a little bit more narrower, which is creating that hot spot in the middle. Not really a big deal because I'll probably end up diffusing or bouncing this off as of something anyway, uh, but the reflector in itself does that. And then I've also seen on a couple of other videos where they've used the Mark I's reflector instead of this one, and it kind of made things a little bit more even. For me personally, what I did is I, I put on the two by Fresnel, which gave it a pretty even wash uh, across it, but uh, just something to take note of. Now for the light in itself, I'm using a Lumu Power once again because I can't afford one of the Sekonic light meters that you guys have seen some of the pros use, so you know, buy a t-shirt. But the reading that I got was 11,710 lux, 1,091 foot candles, 22 for exposure, and 5,110 for color. So what are my overall opinions and thoughts about this light? Uh, I really only have like two cons. One, as much as I love the case, and I know it's rated to kind of hold like 200 some odd pounds, the thing is, is that it's a fabric case. I would like to see this in something more of like a Pelican, uh, because especially here in the Midwest with rain and snow, I just don't know how well a fabric kind of case would do with this. So I would, I would probably much prefer to put it inside of a Pelican, and that's not really a big deal. I mean, that's, that's just me going out and buying the Pelican, maybe putting in like truck packs or something like that and, and making it fit the way that I want it to. Uh, but the case in itself, I feel like probably could have been a, a hard shell case and not a soft, hard kind of hybrid. So my other con that I have for this, and again, this is not a big deal because I could just gel the light if I really wanted to, uh, but if not completely RGB, I'd like to see this light at least bicolor. So like 2,700 to like 7,000. I would really love to see that inside of this light, uh, if not completely RGB. Other than the two cons that I just mentioned, my overall opinion about this is actually, 
it, they've come a long way from the Mark I. I could actually see myself pulling this off of a truck in place of a lot of other HMIs that are out there. I know this is not an HMI light, it's an LED, but I could see myself replacing some of those that way. Um, the build quality I think is there now. I do, I guess I do kind of wish that it was like rainproof, but there's a lot of lights that aren't. We'll just uh, throw cello on it, not a big deal. But even still, I could see myself pulling this off of the truck and using it on a professional set. Um, the Mark I, not so much, but this one, I really feel like they actually listened to a lot of what we're doing out there. Uh, they made the necessary changes and I could totally see myself using it. Lastly, if you didn't know from the last episode that I just did, I do have a coupon code available out there now. Um, it's with lensrentals.com. Um, they are one of the best and largest online resources for renting all of your video and photo equipment, and I absolutely recommend them. Yes, I'm, I'm an affiliate with them, um, but I've been renting from them for years, and I've never really had a problem with them. I totally recommend going and checking them out, and if you use the coupon code GRIPTIPS15 at checkout, you'll get 15% off your order. I definitely recommend you guys going and checking them out. I'll leave a link in the description below. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, you could also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one. Oh,